Did you order a mail order bride? Uh, no. Oh. Well, do you want to review Star Trek with me? Sure. The Enterprise is following a shady ship whose engines give out. Hey, Command Goldahura. Meanwhile, the lithium crystals in the Enterprise are failing and need to be replaced. The captain of the other ship is beamed aboard- Oh, this f***ing guy. The world's most flamboyant pirate- I don't wanna be a pirate! Introduces himself as Leo Walsh. Three more bodies are beamed aboard, and ooh, it's hot ladies in impractical dresses. Because why not? All the boys immediately get all drooly because hot ladies, except Spock, who just doesn't give a f***. As they walk down the hall to pseudo-porn music, the camera gets all male gazy and focuses on their... assets. Walsh and the women, Eve, Ruth, and Magda, act suspicious, with Ruth mentioning there's something different about the women's biology. A lie detector test reveals that Walsh's real name is Harry Mudd, a wanted con man. Turns out the three ladies are cargo, not crew. Mudd is taking the women who are mail-order brides to some settlers on a distant planet. Kirk decides to turn Mud over to the authorities when suddenly the lithium situation becomes urgent and the Enterprise is forced to stop on a mining planet. Mud sees opportunity in selling the ladies off to the rich miners as wives. He sends the ladies off to beguile the crew for information about their new potential buyers. In the sick bay, Bones notices Ruth giving off strange readings on his medical scanner, but she easily distracts him with her womanly wiles. Eve shows up in Kirk's quarters and very nearly seduces him, but she suddenly gets disgusted with herself and Mud and leaves. While Mud makes a deal with the miners, the male crew are having more and more trouble focusing on their work, and Kirk wonders with Bones if the girls are just especially pretty, or if there's something else to all this. At the same time, the women are experiencing a kind of withdrawal, their appearance severely devolving. Oh god, the horror! Women without makeup! Callie, look at me. I'm not wearing any makeup, am I hideous? <laughs> To calm them down, Mud provides them with a sort of pill that makes them conventionally beautiful again. If the men find out we can shapeshift, they're going to tell the church. The Enterprise arrives at Rigel 12 and the miners beam aboard, demanding the brides they were promised by Mud in exchange for the lithium crystals. Kirk is disgusted to be implemented in Mud's business dealings, but inevitably gives in and agrees to let the miners have the women. The miners have a party down on the mining planet with their new fiancés, but Eve acts standoffish and the miner she was promised to, Ben Childress, decides to dance with someone else. The three miners start fighting over the two fun girls and Eve tearfully leaves. She runs out into a sandstorm and gets lost. Childress refuses to give Kirk the crystals until she's found and he's satisfied with his... purchase. Ugh, I felt slimy just saying that. Childress finds Eve in the sandstorm and takes her to his cabin. He wakes up to find her cooking, and she proves to be an adept housekeeper, too. Hot and subservient? She's the whole package, am I right, fellas? For some reason, Childress still isn't satisfied. The pill wears off, and Eve's unmade-up face comes back. Kirk and Mud arrive, and Childress says he wants a refund because Eve is ugly and boring. Mud admits to the use of an illegal beauty supplement called the Venus drug on the girls. Childress is furious. Eve tells him off for being a sexist pig and wanting a trophy wife instead of a real partner. She angrily takes the Venus drug despite him, and her looks come back. Kirk then reveals that the pill was a placebo and Eve's real beauty, and apparently her makeup, comes from her own self-confidence. Childress decides to marry her and gives Kirk the lithium. Kirk leaves with Mud to turn him into the space police. Wow, there is a lot to unpack here. Mud's women is a little, um, problematic? But I think it's more progressive than it looks on the surface. Yes, this is a story about a man selling women off like chattel to other men. But wait, whose choice was it to be sold in the first place? It's the same story for all of us, Captain. No men. We've got men willing to be our husbands waiting for us, and you're taking us in the opposite direction. Oh, it was the lady's choice. In American culture, sex work is a generally maligned area of vocation. The term sex worker is a bit vague, and many avenues of labor fall under its umbrella, from exotic dancing to adult film actors to prostitution. Note that sex work is a voluntary career, meaning that people who have been inducted into the human trafficking system do not apply. In the United States, sex work is considered by many to be immoral conduct because America is one of the least socially progressive first world nations on earth. Our society still maintains wildly puritanical views on sex. But the fact is, sex work is just as legitimate a means of economic gain as any other line of work. And that's essentially Eve, Ruth, and Magda's goal, to achieve economic status, even if it is by selling themselves to rich men. 
In the Old West, female sex workers were economic pioneers. The opening of brothels and bordellos caused commerce to flourish. Whole towns were built around bordellos, and many madams contributed their earnings to building schools and providing health care to the community. Because of these women, civilization, for white settlers, boomed in the West. But the girls want more than just rich lifestyles. They want companionship. I can understand loneliness. The sexism in the episode doesn't go unexamined. Even when our heroes drool over them and act like horned-up idiots, their behavior is called out. Staring at us like we were Saturnius harem girls or something. It's not without its flaws, of course, but this is the 60s, after all. Childress acts like a superficial prick and Eve calls him out for it. With the sound of male ego, you travel halfway across the galaxy and it's still the same song. So the question remains, is Mud's woman sexist? Well, uh, that's a hard... kind of... Hi! It's... Hi. it's ya boy, Ren. <laughs> um, my name's Allie, and I'm this person's girlfriend. That's right! Yeah! Ha! <laughs> Gay! Green is making you look very pale. <laughs> I'm aware. Allie, do you want to tell the lovely people where they can find you? You can find me in Pennsylvania or online at flamingbluepanda.tumblr.com. She helped me write the script to this video, so if it's bad, blame her. <laughs> but seriously, if you're not subscribed to this channel, A, I will hunt you down and kill you, B, what are you doing, and C, please subscribe. <laughs> you're such a good girlfriend. Yeah, 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 okay. Say bye. Bye.